Hello, oodles and noodles. I am back after a small Christmas break to review another title, another book in the fantasy realm. Today I wanted to talk about J.V. Jones, The Baker Boy. Now, this whopper is quite an interesting novel. It is the first book in a three-part series, and it is different. It is stylistically old school, but simultaneously it kind of reads like a YA novel in a certain sense. The flow and the pacing and just how everything fits together makes this an incredibly easy read. So if you're someone who's looking for a rather hefty novel, it hits about 500 pages, but something that you can kind of blow through in two days if you want to. Uh, this is a nice little find. It's quite old in a sense of it, it borrows a lot from David Eddings, uh, the Belgariad style. You, you, you definitely get a lot of the young boy who thinks he's one thing, ends up being another, uh, develops some powers along the way, and is trying to figure out life. It's, it's very hero's journey-esque styled, and that kind of lends itself to the story in a positive way, although the major issue I have with this novel is that there's not that many characters in the book. You basically have your main character, um, who is a, I want to say a baker's boy again, for all intents and purposes, he's the apprentice to the baker at a castle. And at this castle, the king, King Lesquef, is dying. And so this young boy is sort of just living his life. And you are introduced to some further characters. One is Boralus, who is the king's chancellor. You're introduced also to Meliandra, who is the daughter of what, the richest noble in this kingdom, Mabor. And you're seeing all their point of view. So Boralus and Mabor sort of play a counterpoint. I suppose you could say they're the enemies in this novel, although Mabor sort of serves no purpose towards our main character, Jack. And... Boralus is intrinsically tied up with everybody, Meliandra, Mabor, and Jack, but it, it, it's very, very confusing how J.V. Jones decided to showcase these. Generally speaking, in most novels, you'll get maybe one or two points of view within one singular chapter. Now, some people do differently, uh, but generally speaking, it kind of fits in that. Like, you'll have a chapter dedicated to mostly one person. Um, J.B. Jones makes you see through almost every single person's point of view per chapter. And on top of that, we also have another main character, Tall, who's going through a separate journey um, that involves many different things, but are, is sort of in a search for a mysterious boy that he's been charged with finding. And for most of this book, that's pretty much the story. It's just you're hopscotching back and forth through these five characters, many times within the one chapter, just popping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And many times, most of what's happening to each has nothing to do with the other one. They sort of tie in together in a certain way, but it's mostly just kind of, let's say, two characters going at each other, two characters involved with each other, but they're all sort of playing in the backgrounds. Now, it would have been, in my opinion, much better to see each character sort of get a chapter more to himself or herself so that we could really develop them out. Instead, because we're kind of bouncing back and forth, it becomes a little bit too erratic and you don't always see the point of why you're involved in a character's life. Uh, Jack is obviously our primary character and so that makes the most sense to kind of focus more on him and, and his involvement with Meliandra, uh, another character, they kind of tie it together, but many, many times when you're seeing Mabor or Tall's journey, you're like, why am I here? Why am I here? Not to say that they're not enjoyable, that they don't sort of filter in, but you're, you're, you're just, you're not seeing the point. Now, maybe in book two and book three, these all come together, but it's kind of annoying 
at the beginning. It's, it's just too many points of view popping back and forth. That's on top of I'm being generous because you do actually see other people's point of view quite often. And so there's many, many points of view of people just popping in and out and the side points of view, I would say, uh, are, 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 you could argue that the only two main points of view would be Jack and Boralus, so enemy and hero, so to speak. And everybody else is, yes, sure, they're developing the world around it. But much of what they're doing in a moment serves no purpose. It, it just, just doesn't. They're just chit-chatting most of the time. And I don't know. It's not, it's not a preference of mine. It's, it's not something I enjoy in a book. I prefer a much more singular focus on a character to really really blossom them and, and really help them to develop as people. And so... The reason I haven't really said what the main overarching plot is is because there doesn't really seem to be an overarching plot in this book at first. It's just character development, but much of the character development is so scattered because you keep hopscotching between people that it's not really happening. Overall, the, the main plot is that there's a kingdom, the king is dying, and you kind of know why. And you know there's political intrigue happening. You know that your main enemy, like what his general goal is, but you don't really understand why. Like, why is he doing this? What's the whole purpose? What is the purpose of Jack? Like, why can he, where is he going with this? And J.B. Jones tries to give him some emotional development. Like you see his character making these realizations and saying like, oh, you know, I thought my life was like this, but actually there's this and this. But again, why, why do I care? What what is the, the the general purpose like? What is the end goal? I don't really know, and I'm I'm being a little bit harsh on it because again, through the character development, you are sort of seeing things happen to people. Things are going down. There are events taking part, but you mostly, in my opinion, don't really come to know and really care about the characters. So Mabor is a perfect example. Mabor is this rich noble, and he's the father of Meliandra, who is the, sort of the direct romantic interest of our main character, Jack, although it, it's kind of scattered in that sense as well. And I don't really know why I'm following Mabor. I, I can understand him being a character in the book that we hear about, that we see doing things, but why is he a point of view? Why am I reading from his perspective? I don't really understand why. Why am I reading from the perspective of certain other characters? I don't need to. They can be that mysterious enemy or that mysterious person doing things. And I kind of understand who he is through the actions he takes. I don't need to know his deep inner thoughts. It's just not necessary. And everybody sort of intrinsically understands this. Even in, for example, something like the Stormlight Archives, the first book um, in... Uh, Brandon Sanders' epic series. In The Way of Kings, he has these little chapters where we're introduced to random characters that you could say, are, it's kind of weird, why am I suddenly having this point of view? But the reality is actually, is every time you get those little, little, it's, and it's usually like four or five pages, so it's extremely short. You get these side characters that then expand your understanding of, oh, there's these other races or, oh, there's these other cities and it's teaching you about Spren to, to open up your mind towards Spren who are the, the magical creatures living in the world of Stormlight Archives. And so they make sense. These little, little short, short punctuated point of views of random people who you never see again actually give quite a bit of depth and understanding, at least helping you expand your mind and how you think about the Spren of the world. Whereas I spent a huge amount of time with Mabor in the series, and I spent quite a bit of time even with Tal, uh, who is, is who's very much so sort of more like the second main character of the series. And a huge amount of the time I spend with him, I, I frankly don't give a crap about him. Like, I don't understand why I'm, I'm there with him. What am I learning? What am I getting? Uh, it's only near the end of the book that you actually start to see like some kind of hint and backdrop to his story and understand a little bit more. But the buildup just sort of fell flat. Um, even pretty bad things that he did uh, that were forced upon him became very emotional moments. But I felt absolutely no emotion towards it because the character that it happened towards, I barely knew. 
So that character would have made more sense for me to have more of a point of view so that I can understand why I'm supposed to care that that person got hurt, you know, so JB Jones, I think made something interesting and to be very, very fair, I think very possibly book two and book three will expand and actually make us care a little bit more because things will make a little bit more sense. But in terms of a first book and a novel, it just doesn't really draw you in. Uh, it just so happens to be such an easy read that the pacing and the flow of it works so well that you can kind of blow through it and still feel a certain sense of pleasure. But at the end of it, I just, I didn't care about Jack. I didn't care about Meliandra. I didn't care about Mabor. Boralis, our main enemy, wasn't that interesting. And again, I, I don't really know what to tell people in terms of like the general plot line. It's just like, okay, there's a place and there's intrigue and there's a bad guy and he wants to, to control things. And our main character is completely confused and lost and is just mostly just trying to escape. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. That's the story. Our main guy is trying to escape. The bad guy is being bad. Um, our other character, Tall, is wandering places. And they were enjoyable to, to read. They were enjoyable to follow, but not to care about. They were just sort of... It's, again, it's sort of like reading... Uh, why a novel that you just want to blow through just just for for shits and giggles but the problem is, is this is not actually a ya novel this is this is not made for teens there there is a lot in here that is, is not a teeny bop novel so the juxtaposition of the two things happening at the same time just it, the the contrast doesn't work uh unfortunately but i hold out hope for book two I hold out hope for book three, maybe this kind of childishness and the, the, the scatteredness is going to resolve itself in those novels. I really don't know. I have hope still. I read, uh, I think it's called A Cavern of, Cavern of Ice and Fire. Oh, I'm completely blanking. It's another series by J.B. Jones that was actually extremely intense, very, very dark, and much more focused in terms of point of view. And it follows a boy named Rafe, who lives in a world where they're basically just the clans, tribes, sort of dealing with each other. And there's a lot of political intrigue going on in the background. There's a lot of suspense and a lot of buildup, but the buildup is good. And our main character, Rafe, is just getting his ass handed to him like everywhere he goes it's just the life is not very pleasant for him and so it was a much more darker focused journey that kind of built up so i'm hoping this is going to go somewhere uh, in that direction i'm not sure i'm really not sure i wish i could have been a little bit more expressive on things but really that's that's my general feel of this book it's just this kind of I'm not really sure how to feel. I'm not really sure what J.B. Jones was trying to do with this book. I'm not really sure what he wanted his characters to represent. I, I don't really know why I should think anything that's happening matters. Um, for example, I, I, I also did a review not long ago of uh, Memory Sword on Thorn from Tad Williams, The Dragonbone Chair. And that was a very, very, very slow burn book. But, and there was a lot of foolishness and a lot of time spent with the main character just skedaddling and doing random things. But even though it took me so much longer to finish that book, I understood right away where this was going, that it was a very, very slow burn. And I could see my character's development. It made sense. It happens over the course of two months. You understand that this happens, that happens, and he's slowly building his character through his interactions with people. Whereas this one, it was just like, okay, okay, okay. Oh, all of a sudden someone says something to him and we're supposed to be like, oh, character development, because he had a five minute conversation with someone. It's just not feeling it. Uh, maybe it's because the character Jack in this book is made to be quite a bit more intelligent than his station in life. Uh, and due to the things that happen to him, but you just don't feel it. You, you don't get, you don't 
get to see that development. You don't see his growth, really. It just kind of bounces around a little bit too quickly. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again, to be honest. So I'm going to leave it at that. Check out this book if you want something that quite possibly might become something really great <laughs> in book two and book three. Uh, if you're very, very patient with it, at the end of the day, it's a relatively easy read, even though it's 500 pages. Uh, so I would check it out. See what you think. Let me know down below in the comments if you are seeing it from a different perspective than I am. But I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not getting captured in. I'm not feeling the emotion that I should be feeling, and maybe it's just because I'm not looking at it with the right perspective. So let me know what you think. Uh, check out the website details.ca and like, comment, subscribe if you want. You know, uh, if you enjoy me rambling in random ways every once in a while. If not, uh, thanks for checking in. Farewell, my friends.